Edmonton is just as good as Dinosaur Park or Drumheller in terms of the numbers of dinosaurs we find in a unit area of rock exposure. We just don't have a lot of rock exposed. Many years ago when I worked in Edmonton, we always looked for dinosaur bones and we expected we would find something significant at some point in the city of Edmonton. A man was walking his dog in the southern part of the city and as he crossed the creek, uh, he saw dinosaur bones and he realized there were a lot of dinosaur bones. So we, of course, investigated it. His name was Danik Mosdensky and he uh, had definitely found a partial skeleton of a duckbill dinosaur. The specimen didn't turn out to be quite what we expected, though. Uh, it was a partially articulated skeleton, but the more we dug, the more we found. And soon enough, we realized that uh, this, in fact, was more than one specimen. It was multiple individuals of what looked like Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus has also been found in two sewer excavations in the city of Edmonton. And one of them was at least 30 meters down below the ground. The other one was probably about 10 meters below the ground. And then a little bit south of Edmonton, uh, they were putting in a water main a few years ago. And as they were digging up uh, a trench for the pipes, essentially, they hit another uh, skeleton of a dinosaur. So the, the dinosaurs are definitely here. They're just a little more difficult to find. The thing is that there's not that many places in the world where people can be trained to do field work in paleontology. Paleo 400 is a field course we run at the University of Alberta. Try not to walk around too much. Just scrape the mud off the top where you're working. And you'll find that uh, it's pretty dry within a couple of centimeters. So you want to get rid of that mud so things can dry out faster. Come on this way and be careful on the edge. The Danik Bone Bed is a wonderful place for us to do this because it's very close to the downtown campus of the university. It's very easy for us to teach people how to excavate dinosaurs here because it's a very big quarry. The rock is very, very soft. And uh, the bone, um, although it's about the same color as the rock, it has a very different uh, appearance on it. I mean, it, it's got a nice shiny surface and a deeper black. And so very quickly the students learn how to tell the bone from the rock. I'm feeling pretty good about looking for dinosaurs in Edmonton, honestly. Uh, you can find a lot of things, a lot of places. Most people just don't think to look for it. You think paleontology, you think walking out into the desert, hiking around in the beautiful hoodoos and through those sandstone monuments. What they don't realize is anywhere you've got rock exposure, soil exposure, you can find things. And people do find things. My wife, Eva, is a paleobotanist, and uh, we decided uh, very early in our relationship that we wanted to work together and travel together. And uh, so, in fact, we've gone all over the world to, to work on dinosaur quarries, and it made perfect sense that she would uh, co-teach the course. This bone bed is uh, in this black mud. That means there's a lot of organics. It means there are literally millions or billions of fossil uh, spores and pollen uh, in the dinosaur quarry for every bone that we find, essentially. Oh, you found a nice little piece of a leaf. Yeah, deciduous leaf. It's yeah. uh, angiosperm, flower plant. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a dicot because yeah. the veins are branching. Yeah. Do we have any direct evidence of a... Uh... From palynology, you know, from the pollen that we find in the sediments here, we know that there are angiosperms here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I guess this is just more direct evidence. Yeah. Then. But it's, it's a nice show and tell piece that we can show other people. All these are evidence of plants. All these thin pieces of organic material. Right now, it's a quarry that extends at least 75 meters, so it's a very large quarry. The dinosaur we find in it mostly is Edmontosaurus. It makes up about 90% of the bones we recover from the site. But we've also found one Albertosaurus skeleton. The second most common dinosaur by far is also Albertosaurus. But that's not skeletal material, that's teeth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hello? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello? 
That's something. Is this something? Yeah, this is something. This seems to be a tooth. Tooth? Yeah, like you fragmented, but. Like you, you can still see the impression of the entire thing here. Oh, but we only have like this much left. Right now, I'm just scraping away a little bit of mud at a time to see if there's any more of this tooth, but it looks like it's just this tiny little shard. So what, what, do, you, what do we got? What do you got? So here we have two fragments of a dinosaur tooth and we found them just in there. So good news for us is it means we're probably getting close to the bone layer, digging in there. Um, and we can tell they're teeth and not other kinds of bone, um, mostly because of how shiny they are. So, and the center is also totally solid, unlike other bone where you have sort of a bubbly inner marrow center. Nice one though. Yeah, yours too. So this is a square, right? Obviously. This is L65. This is M65. And uh, your X coordinate is the alphabet. So A again is out in the creek. As you move away from there, you're increasing. Z is way over there. Uh, 65 is 65 meters from the tree that the baseline's attached to. So when you are doing your mapping, you set it up so that uh, uh, your back is to that tree. You're facing this way. X is going this way. Y is going that way. So there wasn't very much in this, this particular uh, quadrant anyway. Um, but just for comparison, this is IJ. It had a, a, either a femur or a tibia in it, some ribs, a humerus. If you ask a lot of the students here, Fuker is, is probably like the personal hero, the one that inspired them to, to pursue this path. And like, he, he was also one of the inspiration for the Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park. So yeah, he has a major influence in the field. Okay, so I think uh, switch to the smaller tools now. Uh, there's still some stuff we can do at the back, but I'd rather not do it. I'd rather start working from, from the old edge, which is along here, and use the trowels. Okay. So, Phil, uh, so are we just here? working on this oh, side? Or are we also okay. going to this side as well? Yeah. No, we can do both. Very often in Alberta, some of the best finds are actually made by amateurs. And uh, sometimes it's just by chance. You know, they're not even thinking about dinosaurs. They just end up uh, discovering them because there are so many dinosaurs that are available in, in the province and they're always eroding out of the hills anyway. A lot of the amateurs are people who are quite dedicated. Uh, they spend their weekends looking for dinosaur bones or dinosaur footprints. Sure hope we can find it again. Oh, it'd be cool. I haven't seen it before. I know. And it might be right in front of us. Well, it is. Yeah, look at that. The Owens are some of the more prevalent uh, amateur paleontologists in the Edmonton area. And uh, Tom, uh, I've known for many, many years, he uh, managed to find and finance and help us collect everything when it comes to either dinosaur bones or dinosaur footprints in the Edmonton area. The story also took sort of a unique turn many years ago. Uh, it must have been in the late 80s or early 1990s. Uh, we heard from uh, probably Tom originally that his daughter had found um, dinosaur skin impressions that looked like they were from Albertosaurus. So when I was 12 years old, we came down to this creek site. My dad at the time had been called something called paleo trustee. And uh, paleo trustees were volunteers who had a little bit of an eye for finding fossils. And the Royal Tyrell Museum would give phone calls to these paleo trustees when they would get words from hunters and farmers and people who thought that they had found something, they would send out the volunteers to look. And so thankfully, he would take me along on these visits. There was something that was in one of the rocks that I hadn't seen before, and it was about the size of a heel. And uh, like a large heel, but a heel nonetheless. And I'm 12 years old, and I thought, oh, well, this looks like it could be a boot. So I'm, I'm being a, a little private investigator, and I touch and I realize it's actually in the rock. And uh, then I remembered at the Tyrell Museum, they had these displays in the glass of um, hadrosaur skin impressions. And this looked very similar. So I called over to my dad and I said, uh, Dad, I think I might have found some skin impressions. And he was, of course, dubious. I took a picture of the skin impressions, sent them on to the Tyrell 
and by and by it was confirmed that these were not only skin impressions, they were skin impressions of an Albertosaurus, and they were only, there were only two others known in the world at the time that they were found, and these were the best preserved. Skin impressions were really not well known at that time for Tyrannosaurs, and so this was a, a, a great find for us, and the fact that it was found just outside of Edmonton made it even more exciting. I wasn't surprised at all that Tess had found skin impressions, and the refreshing things about kids going out and looking for fossils is that very often they don't have the mindset that adults have. And this is true for professional paleontologists as well. I mean, you go out to an area, you expect to find something, and so you're looking for something. You're looking for dinosaur bones, so you're looking for a certain texture or a certain color or a certain um, shape, and uh, what you find is dinosaur bones. But right beside it, you may have skin impressions. And very often, uh, somebody who isn't initiated into the, the thing and prejudiced by this, this search image that they have that they're going to find dinosaur bones will notice other things, like skin impressions. And that's exactly what happened. Willow Creek is an absolutely beautiful area. I'm not going to say exactly where it is, because this is an area that does have dinosaur fossils in it, and for that reason, we want to keep it kind of a secret until the whole area has been thoroughly explored. Dad, this piece looks like a footprint. I know, I took a good look at that. So the footprints that were found in Willow Creek uh, are a trackway, and they were originally found by a fellow who was out hunting rabbits. And uh, he sent a, he took a photograph of the trackway with a shotgun shell for scale. Uh, and sent that photograph to the Royal Terrell Museum. They were looked at by the senior technician at the Terrell Museum, and he called me at the law firm that I was working at at the time and said, Tom, we found this trackway. We need a helicopter to get it out. We can't get it out without money. Would your firm be interested in helping sponsor the paying for the helicopter to get them out? And in return for which, I will give your firm a cast of the trackway, which they can, if they like, they can display. So uh, I talked about it with my partners, and since we were moving uh, offices to downtown Edmonton anyway, we thought this would be a really great opportunity to not only help the, uh, the science, but also get a cast for our front reception area. So we agreed to this, and the helicopter showed up on the appointed date. There was a fair amount of publicity. It was kind of dramatic because the trackway was too heavy for the helicopter. And so we were all assembled on the banks watching this. Helicopter had to fly around for about half an hour to lose enough fuel so that it could lift, it could then lift it. It was then lifted up out of this beautiful valley and onto a, a flatbed and then taken to the, taken to the museum. It is, it's a beautiful spot and we're really excited. I came to Willow Creek today with my daughter to investigate a discovery that was made by Jim Bissell, a neighboring landowner. And so we come down today to, to see what it is that he's found and see if in fact it is dinosaur. Okay, so you're saying it's just over here? Yep, you betcha, it's right there. All right, let's go take a look. Let's see what we can find here. I'm excited to see with all the new exposure. Oh yeah, yeah, so that's a scapula or shoulder blade of a hadrosaur. And uh, it was found a few years ago, and we put some light glue on this part, and then Mother Nature took care of the rest and just eroded the rest away to expose it beautifully like this. Yeah, and then there's the other piece right here. This is also a fossil. This was actually connected to this rock okay. when we first found it, and now it's split apart just through natural, natural forces. Oh, Tom, come and have a look at this. Uh, let's take a look. Either wood or bone. Oh, uh, I'd say that's definitely bone. Good job. Hard to say at this point what it is. Um, oh, yeah, that's definitely bone. Maybe in the fall we'll come back when the river's died down. You bet. And get a better shot. Yeah. So far, we're sort of one, one, and one. We found uh, what he had thought was uh, dinosaur bones ended up being petrified wood. It, it happens all the time that petrified wood gets misidentified as dinosaur bone. 
He re-found something that we had found a few years earlier, but then he found what looks like a, a neural spine off of a hadrosaur vertebra, which is a new discovery. Go ahead, you're lush right now, eh? Yeah, Unbelievable. It's hard to see everything. It's important for dinosaur enthusiasts or amateur paleontologists to be out and about because there are relatively few trained paleontologists and they can't be everywhere. Things would not get discovered if these eyes were not on the ground everywhere. Particularly since in Alberta, apart from the Badlands, many discoveries are made on exposures that are cut through by creeks, as we have here in Willow Creek or along rivers. Uh, they tend to be very quick eroding areas. And if they're not discovered, they'll be slumped over or carried away or, or just lost. And so it's very important to have eyes on the ground. I want to add, though, if somebody does find something, that they not disturb it or move it, that they take a photograph of it, and then, as we did with the skin impression, send the photo in to someone who knows what, what to look for. Uh, as soon as you move the object, then all kinds of information about the object gets lost. And although in Alberta it's legal to surface collect, it's illegal to so much as stick an awl in the ground to take something out without a permit and no one gets a permit except the paleontologists.